Less than a fortnight after the Chandrayaan 3's Vikram lander made a successful landing on the south pole of the moon, the country's space agency is all set to begin its trust with the sun. Tomorrow, ISRO will launch Aditya L1, the first space-based Indian mission to study the sun. Placed at about 1.5 million kilometers from the Earth, the satellite will be in a position to continuously view the sun without any obstructions or eclipses. In this episode, I tell you all about the mission, its payloads and its scientific objectives. I am Mohana Basu and this is Pure Science. The major science objectives of Aditya L1 mission are to study the solar upper atmospheric dynamics, chromospheric and coronal heating, physics of the partially ionized plasma, initiation of the coronal mass ejections and flares. It will also observe the in-situ particle and plasma environment providing data for the study of particle dynamics from the sun, physics of solar corona and its heating mechanism, as well as drivers for space weather among other things. There have been several missions across the globe to observe the sun, but this is a first for India. In 2013, US space agency NASA launched the Parker Solar Probe. In December 2021, the probe flew through the sun's upper atmosphere, the corona, and sampled particles and magnetic fields there. This was the closest any probe has gone to the sun. In February 2020, NASA joined hands with the European Space Agency and launched the Solar Orbiter to collect data to find out how the sun created and controlled the constantly changing space environment throughout the solar system. Way back in 1995, NASA, ESA and JAXA, that is the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, jointly launched the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory or SOHO. JAXA launched its first solar observation satellite, Hinotori or Astro-A in 1981. YOKO or Solar-A launched in 1991 and Transient Region and Coronal Explorer or TRACE along with NASA was launched in 1998. In 2006, Hinodi or Solar-B was launched which was the successor to YOKO, the Orbiting Solar Observatory. In 1990, the ESA launched Ulysses to study the environment of the space above and below the poles of the Sun. Other solar missions include Proba 2 in October 2001. The Advanced Space-Based Solar Observatory was successfully launched by National Space Science Center of the Chinese Academy of Sciences on October 8 in 2022. Now, coming to why do we need to get up and close to the sun to study it? Why are there so many solar missions? Our view of the sun from the earth is blurred by particles in our atmosphere. So, a space telescope is needed to get rid of all this interference. Moreover, we all know that the sun provides earth with energy to enable and sustain life on our planet. But the energy consists of more than just visible light. Flow of ions, plasma and magnetic fields also affect the atmosphere on Earth. Solar flares, that is random bursts on the solar surface, can disrupt global communication systems. But we do not understand them enough to be able to predict them. Scientists hope that getting a closer look at the solar surface will help us answer some of these questions. Once the satellite is put in orbit, we will be sure to see exciting scientific discoveries from the mission for years to come. The Aditya L1 will carry seven payloads to observe the photosphere, chromosphere and the corona of the sun using electromagnetic and particle field detectors. Of the seven payloads, four will directly view the sun, while three will carry out studies of effects of changes in the solar atmosphere on the interplanetary medium. The satellite will be placed in an orbit around what is known as the Lagrange Point 1 of the Sun-Earth system. Lagrange points are positions in space where objects sent there tend to stay put. At Lagrange points, the gravitational pull of two large masses precisely equals the centripetal force required for a small object to move with them. These points in space can be used by a spacecraft to reduce fuel consumption needed to remain in position. 
An analogy for this would be holding a thread with a bead at the center of it with two hands and spinning it. At some point, the bead moving in a two-dimensional orbit around an invisible point will be exerting a centripetal force that equals the force that is holding the thread in place. That invisible point would be the Lagrange point. The position of the two hands would be the sun and the earth and the thread would be the gravitational pull of the two bodies and the bead is where Aditya L1 will be. Lagrange points are named in honor of Italian French mathematician Joseph Louis Lagrange. There are five special points where a small mass can orbit with a constant pattern with two larger masses. Lagrange points labeled as L1, L2 and L3 lie along a line connecting the two large masses. Lagrange points labeled L4 and L5 form the apex of two equilateral triangles that have the large masses at their vertices. Being at L1 would give Aditya L1 an uninterrupted view of the sun. The instruments of Aditya L1 are tuned to observe the solar atmosphere, mainly the chromosphere and the corona. The Visible Emission Line Coronagraph, or VELC, will take images of the sun's corona, capturing images of the solar corona. This instrument is designed to capture sudden solar flares, as well as piece together an overall image of the sun's corona by taking a few pictures at a time. Solar Ultraviolet Imaging Telescope, or SUIT, will measure and monitor the solar radiation emitted in the near ultraviolet wavelength range that is 200 to 400 nanometers. It will simultaneously map the photosphere and the chromosphere of the sun using 11 filters sensitive to different wavelengths and covering different heights of the solar atmosphere and help us understand the processes involved in the transfer of mass and energy from one layer to another. SUIT will also allow us to measure and monitor spatially resolved solar spectral irradiance that governs the chemistry of oxygen and ozone in the stratosphere of Earth's atmosphere. This is central to our understanding of the sun-climate relationship. Solar Low Energy X-ray Spectrometer or SOLEX instrument will detect soft X-ray energy. The instrument is meant to complement VELC by making independent and accurate estimates of temperature and emission measures at the flaring sites. This instrument also provides a alert of sorts that can detect an oncoming flare for the main payload, which would help optimizing the onboard memory storage. High energy L1 orbiting X-ray spectrometer will observe the hard X-ray emission from the sun in the energy range of 10 to 150 kilo electron volts. This will provide direct information of electrons accelerated in flares. These four were the ones that will look directly at the solar surface. Now there are three more instruments that will make observations at the Lagrange point. Aditya Solar Wind Particle Experiment or ASPECTS, the primary objective of ASPECTS is to understand the solar and interplanetary processes like shock effects, wave particle interactions, etc. in the acceleration and energization of the solar wind particles from the L1 point. To achieve these objectives, ASPECTS measures low as well as high energy particles that are associated with slow and fast components of the solar wind. The plasma analyzer package for Aditya aims at studying the composition of solar winds and its energy distributions. Solar wind is a magnetized plasma consisting of charged particles like protons, alpha particles, electrons and heavier ionized atoms with magnetic fields embedded in it. This instrument will look at the plasma flowing out of the sun in all directions at very high speeds, an average of about 400 km per second. It is responsible for the anti-sunward tails of comets and the shape of the magnetic fields around the planets. The exact mechanism of solar wind formation is not known, so this instrument contains two sensors solar wind electron energy probe or SWEEP and solar wind ion composition analyzer or SWICAR which would measure respectively the solar wind electrons and ion fluxes and composition as a function of direction and energy. 
Advanced triaxial high resolution digital magnetometer will be used for sensing the magnetic field at Lagrange 1 point and help ISRO keep track of the orientation of the Aditya L1 spacecraft. We will get you the latest as ISRO launches the Aditya L1 mission tomorrow. Once again, this is Mohana Basu, Assistant Editor at The Print. Be sure to follow our social media platforms to stay updated on our coverage of the Aditya L1 mission.